The day is coming when the trumpet shall sound, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? And this is Resurrection Sunday, and we're here in the presence of the Almighty God. And the reason I played that song this, this morning is not only just because it's Resurrection Sunday, but the title that I want to share with you today is What a Good, Good Father. What a good, good father. Isn't that amazing? Because we look in the natural, there are not many fathers today that even tell the truth. There's not many fathers that, you know, that, that take a stand. You can't trust their word. There's not many fathers that, you know, are doing what a father's supposed to be doing. So what a good, good father we serve. <laughs> With his plans and, and his whole... Um, the essence of, of what the resurrection is about and, and people get saved and born again. And not only that, Jesus went back to heaven and he sent the Holy Ghost, <laughs> sent the Holy Spirit to come and dwell amongst these people, to be a comforter, to be a guide, to be with us wherever we go. So what a good, good father. And I think if you can remember one thing this morning, what a good, good father. What a good, good father. Send the plan. Uh, of, of redemption and, and everything like that. So, you know, his plans, and, and our pastor mentioned this morning about, you know, the devil has a plan, God has his plan. And, you know, Jesus came right at the right time. And he's coming again at the right, at the right time. <laughs> and so it, it's exciting. So, uh, you know, his plans, not only for this planet, it's for individuals, it's for the future. Everything there is in God's plan that has been set out for us and for you. Last time I was sharing here, I was talking about that God has a plan for every individual. And it's a good plan. Amen? And so uh, we're in the challenge of being uh, in this planet, on this planet, and being an overcomer. And that's what it's all about. Revelation talks about it over and over again, about being an overcomer. You receive the crown of life. You will, you know, your name will not be taken out of the Lamb's book of life, etc., etc. Eight times in the New Testament. And so this morning, as we're in the presence of God, I want us to realize this morning, number one, my point number one is Jesus is alive. <laughs> Whoa, glory. Jesus is alive. He is alive. He is real. He's interested in you. He's interested in me. He is alive. Jesus is alive. Oh, I'd like to shout it from the housetops. I'd like to shout it all over the Sunshine Coast. I'd like to shout it all over this planet that Jesus is alive. He's alive. He's well. <laughs> he, he, he's sitting on the throne there now, but he sent the Holy Ghost and he's working on this planet to bring forth all the different areas in your life so that the kingdom of God can be extended and, and, and brought forth in this earth. Jesus is alive. You know, it's very interesting. <laughs> you know, when they put him on the cross, they put on there, you know, this is the king of Jews. This is the king of Jews. A few of them wanted to take it down. There's a lot of people who want to take things down that belong to Jesus. But anyway, that was written upon the cross. Man's wisdom came into the situation. Oh, what a good, good father we serve. Amen. Oh, what a good, good father. And uh, so here they were. Jesus was there on the cross and, you know, the chief priests and the scribes and the, and the elders and many others, they mocked him. They mocked him. They really mocked him. They came at him, you know. If thou be the Son of God, take yourself down. You save others. You, you know, can't even save yourself. And they were expecting Elijah to come. All sorts of things were going on. But Jesus is alive, right? And so it says there, and when they were mocking him, it says darkness filled the whole earth. Now, some people say, oh, it was just an eclipse, you know. must have been just that the, you know, the sun and the moon got mixed up and it was just an eclipse. I want to tell you that if God said darkness filled the earth, it was dark, man, <laughs> for about three hours. It was absolutely pitch black. It would have been dark, absolutely dark. Oh, what a great father we serve. He had a plan, didn't he? <laughs> he had a plan. He wanted to wake a few people up. He wanted to realize that, you know, that, you know, this darkness was a sign from the father. 
Then it says, like Ruth was talking about, the veil was rent from top to bottom. Right at that point. You know, if man had done it, and we're talking about, you know, natural fathers and things like that, but if man had done it, they'd probably start at the bottom. It took 300 priests, they say, to put that curtain up. And it was thick. I think it was 60-something feet uh, tall and so wide and everything like that. 45 feet wide. It was a big, big curtain. But it was rent from the top to the bottom. Man didn't do it. God did it. Yeah. Amen. He rent that thing so that you and I can now have access into the very presence of the Lord. Then it says there was an earthquake. Well, it says, you know, some people say, oh, it was just a bit of an earth tremble. I want to tell you, if God said the earth shook, man, it shook. Rocks were split in half, it shook. <laughs> can you imagine those standing around at this particular time and seeing Jesus, you know, there on the cross and they didn't know what was going on and they were mocking him and everything and all of a sudden all this darkness comes in and then the, the, the temple is uh, veil and the temple is rent and then all of a sudden we see here now that, uh, you know, that it's shaking, the earth is shaking. I wonder what we'd do this morning if the earth began to shake. <laughs> Sitting here, we'd run. We'd be looking for a table to get under or, you know, whatever. But I want to tell you, I believe when God said the earth shook, it shook. God was trying to wake up people around about that this was and is the Son of God. It was and it is the Son of God. And so there he was. And so my first point here in understanding what went on you know, it says that, uh, you know, th they were filled with awe. Not only that, the tombs began to open. That's what it says. You can read in Matthew 27, and I'll start at verse 45. We haven't got time to read the whole scripture this morning. But it says the tombs were open. And it says some, some, they saw uh, people that had followed the Lord walking the streets of Jerusalem. A bit scary, isn't it? Imagine if you lived next to a cemetery and all of a sudden, you know, <laughs> whoa, glory. Or you're just about to bury somebody and they get up out of the box. <laughs> Whatever, you know. <laughs> Neil said, bring it on. And I say, bring it on. Amen. Whoa, glory. You know, we, we, we were at a place called Greenfield. I always call it Glenfield and I get mixed up with the place, but it was Greenfield. Field. And, uh, you know, we were sharing there with the church a great little great church it is and uh, but anyway and the holy ghost came in holy spirit came in and things began to happen amen no different between grenfell and right here in this presence of the lord here today the holy spirit is here and he wants to do something in your heart and in my heart we've got to understand that we are living in the most exciting days we're born for such a time as this we are here in the presence of the almighty god and i want to say jesus is alive amen, amen? jesus is alive hallelujah oh you know and and here they were that when these you know uh, those that lived near the cemetery would have got the shock of their life but truly it says, they said, well, those that stood around, this was the Son of God. It was the Son of God. So, here we are in the presence of God. And it says, the angel from heaven came down. Now, they put the, the, the stone in front of the tomb. Not only did they have soldiers around it, but it, the, the, the king said, seal it. So nobody could take the body of Jesus out of there because they thought, oh, well, well, they'll just say, if he does rise from the dead, they'll just take the body away and, you know, and whatever. <laughs> but I want to tell you something, angel of God appeared. <laughs> angel of God came down, broke the seal, soldiers fell over backwards as if they were dead and rolled the stone away. Then it says the angel sat on it. Now, isn't that interesting? Just like the angel that stood at the Garden of Eden and, you know, you couldn't enter it again, you cannot put that stone back because the angel of the Lord sat upon it. And so here is the situation they've got. And people around about stood in awe. They, they were just in awe of all this that was happening on this great day, you know, all around there, the angel from heaven. 
And the statement was made so clearly, he is not here, he is risen. He is risen. Jesus, the greatest thing that ever, ever hit this planet that we know of today was this particular incident that I'm talking about. And so we're celebrating Resurrection Sunday today. We're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. He is alive. He is alive. And he's alive forevermore. Amen? So this is what we're celebrating today is the resurrection of Jesus. He is alive. Now, this is something that we need to understand. That when Jesus rose from the dead, something else happened. There are a lot of things that happened. But the point I want to bring out, which is number two this, today, is he set up his kingdom. Jesus set up a kingdom. A new kingdom is set up. Now, Matthew talks about the kingdom of heaven, and then you get into Mark and Luke and, and those other ones all talk about the kingdom of God. But when Jesus rose from the dead, a new kingdom was set up, and the kingdom of heaven flows into the kingdom of God without going into all the depths of all that. And so the new kingdom was set up. And this new kingdom now, Jesus is the king, the kingdom of heaven, Jesus is the king, and this is the exciting part that I want us to get a hold of. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, it says this. It says, we are transferred, translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Isn't that something? Oh, what a great, great father. What a good, good father we serve. Amen. He's not like a natural father in that sense. It is a good, good father that had a plan and a purpose for every individual on the face of this earth. It is, he is a good, good father. Can you get a hold of it? What a good, good father we serve. A good, good father we serve. He knows the very hairs on your head. He knows your future. He knows all about you. He knows what's about to hit the Sunshine Coast. He knows what's about to hit this planet. He knows the church is arising. He knows that the church is on fire, beginning to stir. We saw people beginning to stir. They'd lost hope. They'd come under the status quo. And just being in their presence and talking about the things of God like we are this morning, all of a sudden we saw their faith rise again. Hope began to come in their heart and, and faith is the substance of things hoped for and we need to have that hope and let that expectation be in, in, inside of us. Can you understand why I'm so excited? I am excited. I am so excited. I see what's happening in the world today because we know our redemption draweth nigh. Hallelujah. And we know that Jesus is coming again. And we know that before he comes, there's going to be a great move of the Holy Ghost. He's working in your life that which he's begun in you. He'll be able to perform and he'll bring us forth. So we're living in exciting days. So we're delivered, delivered from the dominion, the power of darkness, and translated into the kingdom which Jesus set up when he rose from the dead. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, there's two different kingdoms. Jesus said, my kingdom's not of this world. It's a different kingdom. You, I think most of us understand that. It's, it, it's not of this world. And you know, if you go into John, uh, 1 John chapter 5, you'll find there, it talks about, and, and, and I think we uh, uh, are, are familiar with this. It says there, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. So to understand about being in this kingdom, we have to be born again. Repent of the way that we were going. 101 times repentance is mentioned in the word. Repentance means I was heading in this direction, being led by the spirit of the world, and all of a sudden I have a change of heart, a change of mind, a change of attitude, a change of, of understanding what it's all about, and I begin to walk in this direction in the kingdom of heaven. Understand what I'm saying? That's what repentance is. Repentance is so important. And you know, some people say, oh, I've only got to repent once and it's all over. No, man, you know, we've we, we, we got to continually... I, I pray for the spirit of repentance to be upon my life, you know, all the time. Not all the time, but every now and then I have the times where, God, I missed it here. I, I repent, you know? And, and you know, there's a lot of messages out today that you know, that, that are not, you know, the, the grace message, you know, let me not try to criticise, but, you know, they don't understand that under the new covenant in the kingdom of heaven, 
right? Under the old covenant, you were under the law, right? The law was set there. But under the new covenant, what happens now is, as it says in Ezekiel, God begins to write the laws upon my heart, right? There's a difference between the old covenant and the new covenant because God writes the laws upon my heart. So why don't I go to discos and everything like that? Because, you know, I mean, you're free to do what you want to do, but I don't go because I know in here that's not where I'm meant to be. You know what I mean? Because God's written upon my heart. And that's the difference. And God gives us the grace to be able to walk the Christian life and to be able to be obedient to the laws that are upon my heart. You know, you ever do something you know it was wrong? <laughs> Nobody else but Neil and I, you know, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, you know, even your spouse, you got to forgive her. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. oh, I'm getting a bit personal here now. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, it's written upon your heart. You know that 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 Jesus is risen and you're in the kingdom of God and you've been translated from the kingdom of darkness. Then it goes on to say, who is he that overcometh? He that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. What I'm about to say is that you cannot overcome the world and its system unless you are born again. You cannot. The world system is so grabbing people. It grabs them maybe even through being the richest man in the world or whatever, or having a boat or whatever. It can grab you. Now, it's all right to have those things. I'm not, you know, it's all right to have those things. But... But, you know, the, the spirit of the world works in all different ways to get a hold of us, has a hold of us, right? But the only way you can overcome, the only way you can overcome is to be born again because that's what John just told us there. Amen? Are you with me this morning? And so my first point is Jesus is risen Second point is he set up his kingdom. He's translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. And so here we are in the world. We're not of it, right? We're passing through. We're not of it, but we're passing through into the whole plan of God himself. Amen. Oh, what a good, good father. <laughs> oh, what a good, good father. What a good, good father we serve. What a good, good father. Amen? Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, God. You know, when you think about the Lord's Prayer, it says, our Father. That means family. That means we belong. That means it's our Father. Isn't that something? We chart in heaven, hallowed, holy, um, righteous, you know, everything is thy name. Thy kingdom come. Now let's think about that for a minute. When the kingdom of God comes, our daily bread is supplied. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses. In other words, we have an ability to be able to forgive. You know, I've seen people that won't go to such and such funeral because they said such and such 25, 30 years ago. Or they won't do this, they won't do that. They don't have the ability to give. But when the kingdom of God comes, we have that ability. We have that ability to be able to forgive. Forgive us of our trespasses, we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Oh, what a prayer. Do you know that every temptation has a door? That's what Jesus said. I will make a way of escape. So when we hit temptation, we have an ability to go through that door with the help of Jesus and his word. Right? You can't say, oh, I'm overtaken by temptation. It's only because you gave in to the flesh and the devil or whatever. But, you know, what, well, what I'm saying is there's a door even in temptation. This is why the kingdom of God is so important to have within us. Where are we up to? Deliver us from evil. The ability to be able to be delivered from evil. Isn't that a different way of looking at the Lord's Prayer? Deliver us from evil. Oh, thy kingdom come. Let it be part of me, Lord. Lord, uh, Lord let, it, let it be, you know, very real to me. 
Deliver us from evil, for thine is the glory. All the glory is to Jesus. And that's why I could say we serve a good, good Father. We serve a good, good Father. Amen? We serve a good, good Father. So, here we are. Now, this kingdom, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28, says this. Therefore, let us be grateful. Isn't it interesting the story of the, um, the lepers? Remember the ten lepers came to Jesus and, and he said to them, go and show yourself to the priests, and only one returned. Who remembers that story? If you look at it, the one that returned, the ones that went were healed, but the one that returned and was grateful, it says he was made whole. There's a difference. I believe that what leprosy had done, knocked his hand off, eaten it away back down to here, grew. Right? Whatever else was going on, the one that was grateful was made whole. Jesus said to his disciples, rejoice not that the devils are subject to and everything like that, but rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Oh, glory. You see, you see why I'm excited? People say, Kendall, what's different about you? It's because I'm excited. I've got the kingdom of God living within me. Therefore, everywhere I go, the kingdom of God goes with me. Everywhere I go, the kingdom of God goes with me. You understand? Oh, this is, the kingdom of God is within us. Amen. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. So here we are. It says in um, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, Therefore let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken. This kingdom cannot be shaken. This kingdom cannot be shaken. Isn't that something? The kingdom that I'm talking about, the kingdom of heaven which flows into the kingdom of God cannot be shaken. It is as secure as anything can be secure. It is so secure. The kingdom of God. Right? Now what else does it say about this kingdom? Now, I've got all points here, but anyway. You know, there are many other kingdoms that have crumbled. There are not many kingdoms that don't crumble. But this kingdom we're talking about because of the resurrection of Jesus and Jesus is alive, right? And he set up this kingdom cannot be shaken. That's why over the years and through the times and in the past, they've tried to wipe out the Bible. They've tried to destroy the church. They've tried to do everything. But I want to tell you something, they're wasting their time because this kingdom will not be shaken. <laughs> it will not be shaken. And so the devil comes along and tries to deceive you or tries to get you to do something out of the ordinary or whatever and, and he wants to get you back out of the kingdom of heaven, back into the kingdom of darkness and, and he has a plan for you. So he tries all things. Anybody else experienced it, you know, where everything seems to have gone wrong? If he can't get you it one way, he'll get you it another way. He'll try everything that he can to get you down under. He will try everything he can because he wants to get you out of the kingdom of darkness. Huh? Sorry. He wants to get you out of the kingdom of God back into the kingdom of darkness. And so he tries all different angles and tries different things. And, and so uh, then we find in Luke chapter 13, verse 18, it says there, and there are many, it, it, and I haven't got time to go into them all this morning, but it says, what is the kingdom of God like? You know what it says? It said it is like a grain of mustard seed. Oh, -ho! the smallest of seeds can grow into the biggest tree. This is what we have received because Jesus is risen from the dead. We have received the seed of God. See, we're not born again of corruptible seed. Right? We're born again of incorruptible seed. Can you understand what I'm saying? Jesus is alive. He has risen from the dead. He set up his kingdom. He called us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Right? And now, here we are in the situation of knowing that it's like a grain of mustard seed. Now, you put the mustard seed in the right soil, it, soil, it will grow into a really big, big tree. 
That's why Jesus said, if you understand the parable of the sower, you'll understand all parables. And we need to see that when we're born again, it's not just saying, Jesus, come into my heart, and we get a ticket to heaven. God places a seed within us. And as we water that seed and put it in good soil, it will grow and grow and grow. That's what I love about Neil when he's preaching. He talks and tells, he actually tells us how to water that seed. Confession of your mouth. Standing on the word. Expect a great move of God. Come to church and expect God to do something. Pastor Neil's always preaching about it, and I'll leave that to him because he's good at it. <laughs> I always enjoy coming to church and having an encounter because he, he, he's just so wants us to grow. He wants us to water the, the ground so the seed will grow. And it's just, a, you know, the size of a mustard seed. That's what it is. Right? Once you receive the seed, everywhere you go, the kingdom of God goes with you. Huh? I'm standing here sharing today and probably a little different teaching a little bit, but it, it's just what God has done for you and what he's done for me, the kingdom of God, that seed is within us. We're not a born again of corruptible seed, right? It's only the size of a mustard seed, but it grows within our lives. That which he's begun in you, he's able to finish. Did you know that? Yeah. Amen. That seed grows. And then we talk about the seed of faith. You know, the, the faith is the substance of things hoped for. And what happens is hope begins when we receive Jesus, when we're born again, when we realize we have the kingdom of God within us, we've got the seed of God in us. When we realize this, what happens? Faith begins to grow because we've got hope. Amen? Not only just hope of eternal life and spending eternity with Jesus, but a hope that God is raising up his people. He's raising up his church. He's stirring. I tell you what, God is stirring. God is stirring. God is stirring. He's stirring our life. So, you know, this unshakable kingdom is within you and within me. Unshakable kingdom is within you and with me. Oh, hallelujah. So that's why we need to understand the laws of the kingdom, which we may talk about sometime, but one of them is repent, keep your heart open before God, and be ready to receive, keep your heart clean before God, and allowing the Holy Ghost to work in your life according to the word. And so, here we are in the presence of God this morning, and I just know that the Holy Spirit is here. Holy Spirit is here. Holy Ghost is here. God wants to do something in your life this morning. Amen. There may be somebody here that's feeling quite discouraged this morning. If you'd like to come and sit in the front seat, and I don't want to embarrass anybody, but just, just for a moment, just, because Jesus is the one that sets us free. Jesus is the one that heals our body. Jesus is the one that comes in amongst us by the Holy Ghost. That's why he went back to heaven, because he couldn't be everywhere as a human being in one place, but he sent the Holy Ghost so that the Holy Ghost could come to this meeting here this morning and is, and is here. The Holy Ghost could come in and just begin to do what the Holy Spirit needs to do. God wants to touch your life. He wants to touch my life. You've got that seed within you. Let it grow. Let the expectation of God begin to rise in your heart like never before because we're in that day. We had a word of prophecy that came out in the prayer meeting last week. Expectation, expectation, expectation. If you have the seed of God within you, if you've got the kingdom of God within you, if you've got the very life of God dwelling within you, then you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You can lay hands on the sick and they shall receive. You shall speak unto the devil and tell him to go. Amen. Our pastor's been sharing on, you know, say no to the devil. Tell him where he belongs. That's the day that we're living in now because the church is on the rise. The church is beginning to, to begin to get a hold of, restore back to our first love. Begin to understand that we are in the days of Elijah where the word of the Lord's beginning to flow again and beginning to flow afresh. 
We haven't heard a lot of preaching on repentance and, and the power of the blood and everything in, in a few years back. But today it's coming again and we're hearing it. We're hearing well, this, this kingdom of God that is very, very real. And so, you know, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. The kingdom of God goes with me wherever I go. Hallelujah. Because I've let that seed grow. I've let it be watered by the word. I've let the Holy Ghost minister to me and to you, and I know you are the same. Oh, we are the most powerful thing on the face of the earth. Isn't that right? Do you not realize that? The most powerful people on the face. Doesn't matter what we're doing. Doesn't matter what situation we're in. Oh, I just drop into my spirit, which God has put in there. Just drop into my spirit. And God says this morning, I just dropped in there. He is alive and he is alive forevermore. Jesus is alive. Do you believe it this morning? Amen. Amen. Let's stand together in the presence of God. I want to pray for some people this morning. And if you'd like to come, we'd love to do that. And just pray with you. Because, you know, one can put so many to flight, but two can put many more to flight and three can put many, many more. Amen? And so we want to stand with you this morning because I know that the kingdom of God is within me. I know that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I know that the anointing of the Holy Ghost is able to do abundantly above that which I even ask or yeah. think. Amen? Are you glad you got the kingdom of God within you? Yeah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Oh, what a good good father. Amen. Can we all say that together? Oh, what a good, good father. Come on, you can say it better than that. Oh, what a good, good father. Once again, oh, what a good, good father. We'd like to open the altar call if you need prayer, if you need somebody to stand with you in any situation at all, then we want to stand with you. And believe God, there's power in unity, there's power in standing together, there's power in standing together and exercising your faith. Amen? Why don't you come? We pray with you this morning as we sing a song together.